About a year and a half ago, I did a quick video showing some of my most commonly used and favorite components and tools in my DIY projects. Well, I've done a lot of projects since then, so I thought it might be time to do an updated video of the new items I've discovered since the original video. So hang around. Hi and welcome to Resin Chem Tech. Now my original video covered a lot of the controllers and LED components and voltage regulators and tools that I still use in a lot of my projects today. So it might be worth checking that out at the end of this video. But this video is gonna cover everything that I've discovered and have used since that time and have now become some of my favorites. Now, none of these products were supplied to me and no vendor is sponsoring this video. These are actual products that I used in my projects. I'm going to kind of do this in reverse chronological order from the oldest project to the most recent, and I'll try to throw a clip or an image up here of the project where I first used that component. If one of those catch your eyes, check the video description. I'll leave links to all those projects along with the links to the part that I show, and I'll be updating my blog article that has links from all the parts from that original video and the ones you'll see in this video. With that, let's get started. First up is an item from my DIY Stream Deck project, and that is a 7-inch Raspberry Pi touchscreen. Now, Raspberry Pis are still a little hard to get a hold of, but if that gets a little bit better, which we hope it does, and you need a nice, responsive touchscreen for your Raspberry Pi, this is a really good choice. There are a lot of parts I used for the first time in my Build Your Own Desktop Power Supply project, but there were a couple of items that I've since used in other projects. The first one's a really simple one. It's these terminal blocks. I actually first used these in my WLED Christmas tree project, but I made substantial use of them in the desktop power supply. Now you're not gonna use these in your smaller little DIY projects, but for bigger projects where you have some pretty heavy gauge wire, this helps not only in organization, but making good secure connections using something like a spade connector with these. The other item is this volt and amp meter. If you have a situation where you need to continuously monitor voltage and or amps, this is good up to 100 volts and up to 10 amps. Now, there are a lot of other products on the market like this. Even some USB cables have inline power. But if you need something with a little bit bigger and brighter display, this is a good choice. In my outdoor LED projects, there were a few items I probably wouldn't use again, like the neon rope tubing, but I did discover a few really nice components. One of them is this IP67 rated outdoor enclosure. It's a perfect size for holding a power supply and a controller, has a lot of mounting options, and that perforated faceplate makes mounting things a breeze. One other item I used for the first time in the outdoor LED install was white braided sleeve and white heat shrink tubing. Now I talked about using this expandable sleeving in my other video to help make your wiring runs a lot neater, especially when you have multiple wires. But in a situation like my back porch where everything was painted white, having the ability to use the white sleeve and the white heat shrink tubing made for a lot neater installation and a higher wife approval factor. From my video on improving the motion detection on my LED stairs comes this tiny VL53LOX time of flight sensor. This is an I squared C device, and while technically it measures distance, it's very easy in ESP Home to convert this over to a binary sensor that can detect when something moves across its path. It's ideal in situations where you need to detect motion or movement in a small focused area as opposed to the broader range of something like a PIR sensor. From my video on early leak detection comes the Akara Leak Detector. This is a Zigbee device, meaning if you already have a Zigbee network in your home, you don't need the Acara Hub or even the Acara app to bring this straight into Home Assistant. I now have one of these under my dishwasher, my washer, my sump pump, and every sink and toilet in the house. Lucky for me, it's a Home Assistant automation that's never fired, and I hope it never does, but I'm glad I have them around. From my video on an improved multi-sensor actually comes three different components. The first one is the RCWL0516 Microwave Motion Sensor. Now this has much better range and sensitivity than a normal PIR sensor. And while you can adjust both the range and the cooldown period through the use of a resistor or capacitor, do note that this does detect in 360 degrees and through walls. So it's not the ideal motion sensor for some situations. Next up is the AHT20 I squared C temperature and humidity sensor. Uh, this, not only is this much smaller than the normal DHT22 I used before, 
I did find it to be much more accurate in terms of both temperature and humidity than the DHT22. And finally is this photosensitive sensor module. I like it not only because it has the standard analog output that you would normally get from a photoresistor, but also has an adjustable digital output that gives you a true or false whether the light is above or below a preset level. And do note that all three of these devices are supported in ESP Home for easy integration into Home Assistant. I did an entire video on this next component, which is the TM1638. This has eight seven segment displays, eight individually addressable LEDs, and eight individual push buttons. So there's a lot of flexibility to, for this device. And currently at less than $4 a piece, it's hard to beat whenever you need a simple numeric display and the option to create lots of automations through various push buttons. I actually use mine in a matrix display to give me current YouTube stats. But of course, this is only one of many uses. I actually did a whole series of videos on this particular item, which is the Aurelic Up to Stream DIY Amp. This is actually one of my favorite projects that I've done. And besides all of the features of the amp itself, it has the ability to integrate and control from Home Assistant via MQTT and the ability to stream from a local Sirius XM streamer or other online music service. But in the process of building this, there are a few other components that I discovered that have use in a lot of other projects. Both of these happen to be displays. Here on the left is the 0.96 inch OLED SSD 1306 dual color display. It's an I2C device, and it's ideal in a situation where you need to display some information, but in a small package. Here on the right is the 2.8 inch ILI 9341 LCD touch display. So this adds touch capabilities. It does come with a stylus, but in all honesty, I've found as long as your touch regions are big enough, it works just fine with your finger. Both of these devices are supported in ESP Home. This is an SPI device where this is an I2C device good options for a situation where you need some kind of display on your DIY project. Another item I discovered during this project, thanks to the feedback from a subscriber, are these small brass heat inserts. Using a soldering iron, and a tip normally comes with these, it allows you to simply melt a heat insert into your 3D printed enclosure, and then use a threaded screw for a much more secure connection than you would normally get just with the plastic of the 3D print. Just make sure that the tip that comes with the ones you're ordering will fit your particular model of soldering iron. In my video on moving Home Assistant to Proxmox, I introduced the machine that I'm currently running Proxmox and Home Assistant on, and that's the Mini Forum Mini PC. I've had a lot of luck with these. I actually own five of them. Four of them are currently running Proxmox and different apps. The one thing I do like about them is most models allow you to either add a second two and a half inch hard drive or a second SSD. Of course, there are a lot of mini PCs out there, but I get asked a lot about the, what I use, and I'm a big fan of these mini forums, mini PCs. I've done a lot of different LED videos, and in most of those videos, somewhere along the way, I talk about the use of a level shifter. Most of my videos I use is I squared C level shifter, but I also did a video comparing this to a different type of level shifter. This is the SN74 AHCT125N, and it is a buffer gate IC shifter. It's supposed to be a little bit better if you have larger installs or need very precise timing, although I didn't see any difference between the two. The one thing about this shifter, it is a little more friendly if you like to socket all of your components. But there was one other thing I did discover during the making of that video, and I've talked about these Wago lever nuts in my previous video. But one of the newer items is this simple straight connector for connecting two wires together, as opposed to the much larger version you see here. These are really nice for temporary or even permanent situations where you need to connect two wires together. In my video on automating a window air conditioner, I used a couple of new components for the first time. I used an IR transmitter. Now I'd used IR receivers in the past to add remote control functionality to things like WLED installs, but this is the first time I used a transmitter. I tested a couple of different versions. I actually found the cheaper version to give me a little bit better range, but there was an interesting third option I haven't tried using yet, and that's one that has both a receiver and a transmitter on board with an ESP8265, which can be used with ESP Home or things like Tasmoda or Arduino. I also used for the first time a force-sensitive resistor. 
This varies the resistance based on the force that's applied to it. Therefore, we can actually measure voltage, and I use this for a bed occupancy sensor. And to be quite honest, it's worked out very well in the month or six weeks or so that I've been using it. And in my most recent video, I built an NFC tag reader for Home Assistant using the PN532. It does come with these extra components, but you will need to add a controller like an ESP8266 or an ESP32. And while I haven't had a chance to actually use it yet, is the new Acara FP2 presence sensor. Now, if you've watched any other smart home videos, you've probably seen this reviewed by a lot of other YouTubers. It has a lot of features, including the ability to detect multiple people in multiple zones, but they've been a little hard to come by here in the US, often out of stock. So I picked one up while I could, and I'll figure out the best use for it, but I've got a sneaking suspicion it's going to also become one of my favorite smart home components. So that's a pretty quick recap of some of my favorite products and items from the last year to year and a half. Now, Prime Day is right around the corner, and I have no idea if any of these products might be discounted or not. But if you're interested in any of them, you might check out the links here in the video description. And if you'd like to see some more about some of my favorite controllers, LED strips, sensors, tools, and more, you might check out the video that's going to magically appear right here. And that will also have links to a blog that will have these products and more. As always, I would like to say thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.